Hello there, it's Juliana and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm sharing even more ways to use Distress Watercolor Pencils and I'm walking you step by step through how I use them to create this card. I use them on everything from the background to the embellishments. Personally, I'm really excited that the entire Distress palette is now available in this medium and that I now have another option when it comes to adding color to my projects. For me, there is also a certain level of comfort in using them because I already know the Distress Color Palette really well, and I know what the colors are gonna look like when I use them. And while you can use Distress inks to achieve many of the same effects, I love that I'm not wasting ink, and I feel like I have a little more control in adding color if I use them to color directly onto the paper. If you're looking for more ideas and techniques using the Distress Watercolor Pencils, make sure to check out my Distress Watercolor Pencils playlist. You can find a link to that in the description box below. If you're interested in any of the supplies I'm using in this video, you can find a complete supply list in the description box below. When you shop through those affiliate links, you're helping me continue to be able to provide you with all of the content I share. Now let's get on with the making. So to create the background, I'm going to be doing an ink smushing technique with some old paper distress ink and I'm working on a piece of distress watercolor cardstock and I'm just going to smush the ink pad here onto my craft mat. Spritz that with some water and then I'm just going to smush the paper, kind of dab it in there into the ink. And then I'm gonna use my heat tool to dry it. A little trick I've been doing lately is to just kind of hold the paper flat with my scissors. And that just kind of helps keep that ink from running down and pooling. And you can kind of tilt that up and let it, and then have it run back down into the paper so that you're not wasting that ink. So to build up the layers of interest when you're working with the distress inks and doing this ink smushing technique, you want to dry in between each layer. So, you know, if you're happy with how this looks, you can move on to the next step. But if you want to add a little bit more interest, then you can just take this and smush it into the ink that's still on your craft mat. Kind of pick up any more little drops and splits and splots of ink. and and you dry that again. And the thing I'm working on here is just a kitchen trivet hot pad, which is, um, I'm just using that to help protect my work surface because the mat that I work on for my videos uh, doesn't tolerate a lot of heat. So this is just to protect my mat. And, um, but if you're using a glass, the glass media mat, you know, you don't need to worry about this or any kind of, you know, if you've got a surface that's more heat tolerant, you don't need to worry about using something like this. But I've just found it really helpful when I'm working on this surface for my videos. As you can see, that second smushing just added some more depth and interest to the background. And you could certainly continue to do that. It's just a matter of personal preference as to how many times you continue to do that. So the next thing I'm gonna be doing is adding some stamping to the background using Distress Watercolor Pencils. And I'm gonna be working with this Papillion stamp set from Tim Holtz. And I'm gonna be using this kind of larger background image. And I'm just gonna get that position in here, get my magnets on there. Get that centered on my paper. I'm going to be working with the Distress Watercolor Pencil and Pumice Stone, and I'm just going to put a little bit of water here on my craft mat. And I'm going to get this uh, pencil wet. I'm going to let it, let it kind of soak up that water. And then I'm going to color over the stamp with that pencil and I'm holding the pencil you know flat and rubbing along the sides of it here 
and I'm just going to continue working over the entire surface of the stamp. And I haven't tried this with um, clear, like photopolymer type stamps, um, but I do know with the rubber stamps, it definitely helps for them to be seasoned. So, you know, if it's a brand new stamp, you might want to make sure that you've, you know, stamped it a few times with some archival ink, which will definitely help season them up. And so if you wanted to try this with a clear stamp, you know, you definitely would want to season those as well, I'm, I'm assuming. So once you get the color everywhere, then what you're going to do is you're going to take your water bottle or distress sprayer and you're going to just mist that a few times just to get it kind of nice and wet. And then you're going to stamp that onto your background. Oh yeah, look at that. All right, and so then we'll dry this so you can kind of get the full effect of it. And one thing I absolutely love about these watercolor pencils and I find kind of fascinating is that you're applying a wet, a water reactive medium on top of another water reactive medium and it didn't cause it to run or bleed or anything like that, which I think is pretty cool. So you can apply these watercolor pencils on top of distress ink, distress oxide inks, and even distress paint, which is what I did here. And as you can see, like it doesn't, um, it still shows up on top of it. It just layers on top of it. So I, I think that's absolutely fascinating. And if you don't wanna waste that pigment that's on the stamp, you can re-wet that again if you want, and then just take another piece of paper and stamp that onto there just to kinda, and you can use that for another background. So, and there's probably enough on there to do that again if you wanted. So, just another option for you. The next thing I wanna do for this background is I wanna stamp this butterfly image in the center here. A little trick to help center this stamp in the middle of your paper is to take this ideology ruler from Tim Holtz and kind of center that on to your stamp. It will stick to the ruler and then you can center that onto your paper. And then once you have that centered on there, you can just kind of hold it down with your fingers, peel up the ruler, and then close your stamping tool and you're ready to go. Now I'm gonna stamp this with um, archival ink. I'm using frayed burlap and I'm just I wanted to use uh, archival ink just because it would give me a little bit more of a detailed image. And it um, also, because it's waterproof, it won't react with the distress ink or the watercolor pencil, which are water reactive, and you know, give me be able to give me that more crisp image. So it's just gonna be real light um, because of the color that I'm using, but I didn't want anything that was going to take away too much from the embellishments that I'm going to be adding to the card. So there we are. Now I'm just going to trim this down. Because as always, I like to matte my background so I'm just gonna turn this down to four by five and a quarter inches and then to um, finish this off I'm going to just ink the edges here with a little bit of frayed burlap now if you want to add a little bit more interest to the background you could also add some wow uh, water splatters um, you know, just pull your trigger kind of slow or fast, get bigger droplets if you go slower, and then you can take a paper towel and dab up some of those, dab up some of that ink, and this adds a little bit more interest to the background there. 
The other thing I did for the background was to distress the edges of the background panel um, using the distress tool. And then I just kind of let some of the, you know, kind of tore it and curled up some of the edges. And then I adhered that to a piece of black craft stock that I sanded the edges of it with a piece of sandpaper. To add a little bit more interest to the background, I added some splatters. And to do that, I just took the Crackling Campfire pencil, squirted a little bit of water onto my craft mat, got a little bit of that on in, mixed into the water, and then I just used my brush to pick up that and splatter onto the background. Now for this next part, what I'm gonna what I've done is taken a piece of distressed watercolor cardstock and cut out this butterfly in the body using the tattered butterfly Biggs dye. And I'm going to color that in and make it kind of look like a monarch butterfly. And to help me do that, I pulled up some images on Google and just used those to kind of help as a guide as I drew like the lines and, and figured out the coloring and everything. The I'm gonna use a permanent alcohol-based ink. So you want something that's a permanent pen because we're gonna be coloring this in with the watercolor pencils. And so you just want something that won't run. So I'm just gonna use the pen then to draw these lines and then we'll color it in with the watercolor pencils. If you're not comfortable just drawing straight on here, you could also use a pencil to kind of help get your lines figured out and then go over them with the pen as well. As I draw the lines, I'm just going to start off here with an out, going, kind of going around the outside edge. And then I'll go back and add the inside details. And I'm not worried about trying to get a perfect line here, this kind of sketchy look actually. Okay, so then once you have all of your pen drawing done, you're going to select your Distress Watercolor Pencils and you're gonna need a water brush. And the colors I'm gonna be using here are um, Carved Pumpkin Crackling Campfire and Black Soot. So I'm gonna start off with Carved Pumpkin. Just gonna get some of that uh, color off onto my brush. Instead of coloring straight to the paper, I like to pull the ink from the, the pencil. Just kinda kind of spread that out a little bit. If you've got too much on there, you can wipe it off. I'm just going to get all these sections colored in. Then I'm going to add 
a little bit of the crackling campfire while this is still damp, just to kind of get it to bleed and wick into those areas. And add a little bit of darkness and dimension. So this is still, this is pretty pale in color. So if you want this to be more vibrant, you can just add more, more pigment from the pen, pencils as I'm doing here. And then if you want to dry that a little bit, you can. And then you can go back and add a little more intensity with that crackling campfire here to kind of more towards the center. And just tap off some of that excess and let it kind of blend it out. And then I'm just going to repeat that same process over on this other side. And then, you know, you can just keep building up those colors, making it darker and darker if you like. So then once you're happy with how the orange section is looking there, kind of wipe that off. And then we can kind of clean off your brush there a little bit. And then we're gonna use some black soot and go around the outside edge. But before we do that, you wanna make sure all of the previous coloring is dry. That will kind of prevent it from wicking and blending, which we don't want to do here. And we're just going to add that black here kind of around the outside edge. And I'm going to do some here in the center, just to, even though that's going to be covered up by the body. Just... And if you want it a little darker, just go back and add another layer of wash. And then we're going to do that same thing with the body here. I'm just going to color that in with some of the black soot as well. And if you do end up getting like too much color on there, you can also kind of dab it off with a paper towel if you like to kind of lighten it up a little bit.
And the last step I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of some detail with some white paint here. So I've just got some picket fence and I've got a just a teensy tiny little brush. You could also use a white uh, pen if you have one. I did not, so this is what I'm gonna, gonna use. And then I'm just gonna use that to just add some little dots of white here around the edges. Just add a little bit more interest and give it a little bit more of that look of a monarch. And then we'll just set that paint then to the side and let that dry. To add a little bit more interest to the butterfly, I also took a piece of wire just from my stash and used some pliers to just curl it under and create some little antennas. And then I'm just gonna attach those to the back side of the butterfly. Next, I'm going to color this die cut, which I cut from a piece of Distress Watercolor cardstock. The die set I used is the Garden Greens set from Tim Holtz. And one thing I like about using the watercolor pencils to color in die cuts is I'm not wasting a bunch of ink. Because if I, you know, needed to use like my ink pad to get the ink out, I would be you know, having to smush that ink pad onto my craft mat and then pick that up. So this just lets me save some ink. And I know some people like to, um, or use the uh, re-inkers to um, color with and, which has, you know, that's another option as well that, you know, doesn't use a lot of ink but those are a lot more in concentrated because of them being a re-inker. So you have to add some water to them as well. But I just like this because it just really gives you a little more flexibility in doing this. And the two colors I used on this were peeled paint and forest moss. So here I've got a couple of stamped images that I stamped with black soot archival ink onto some distressed watercolor paper and I used the field note stamp set and I'm going to give them a, a little bit of a distressed effect using the watercolor pencils as well. And for this one here I'm just using old paper and just going to pull some of that pigment off of the pencil and then use that to kind of dab and distress this paper. And then I'm just gonna dry these with my heat tool. Then I'm just going to finish them off by inking the edges with a little bit of frayed burlap distress ink. Here's a look at the finished card. Once I had all of the embellishments completed, I began layering them onto the card. I also added this frame, which I die cut from black craft stock using the Tim Holtz Decor Frames Bigs die. I then sanded the edges with a Ranger sanding disc. I used some foam adhesive to adhere the butterfly and add a little more dimension. The finishing touch was a stamped sentiment from the Tim Holtz Tiny Text stamp set. So what was your favorite technique, tip, or trick that I shared? Feel free to leave me a reply in the comments below. Until next time, stay crafty, my friend. Thanks so much for watching. I'm so grateful for you. I was wondering if you could do me a quick favor and subscribe to my channel 
or leave me a thumbs up or a comment. If you're feeling extra generous, I'd love for you to share about my channel with your friends. All of these things help out us YouTubers so much, and it would mean so much to me to have your support.